Do you love this church? Well, if you love this church and you have your cell phone, please take it out, connect with us. Hashtag BCF Brampton. Also, God is in the house today. Do you believe that? Lift your hands with me as we open in prayer this morning. Thank you for choosing to be with us today. If this is your first time, thank you for being here. If you're watching via the internet, thank you as well. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this day that you have made. Father, I thank you that you inhabit our praise. I thank you, O oh God, that you are the God who is always with us. So Father, as we lift our hands in adoration to who you are, we commit our eyes, we commit our thoughts, we bring every thought captive to the obedience of your word and your praise. We thank you that the Holy Spirit is here to worship in us and through us this day. So Father, we thank you, we bless you, and we praise your name. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.
overcome, yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. You are here carrying our burdens, carrying our burdens, covering our shame. He has overcome, yes, He has overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. And you carry, carrying our burdens, covering our shame. He has overcome, yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. Shout it out, shout it out. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated. And we will shout it out, shout it out. That God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, Shout it out, shout it out That I will live, I will not die The resurrection power of Christ Alive in me And I am free in Jesus' name Yes, I will live, I will not die I will declare and lift you high Christ revealed and I Shout it out, shout it out. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies in the name of, in the name of Jesus, enemies defeated. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated. And we will shout it out, shout it out.
into the room everything changes darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring and when you walk into the room every heart starts burning and nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship worship the Lord this morning. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We give you highest praise. And we express our love to you, Lord. Let's sing it out. We love you. We love you. And we'll never stop. We can't live without you, Jesus. We love you. And we can't get Every hopeless situation ceases to exist. And when you walk into the room, the dead begin to rise. Cause there is resurrection life in all you do. Jesus, there's 
Amen. I want to take an opportunity this morning and turn around and give someone a high five and, and just bless them. Tell them you're in the right place today.
you got it in you. I, some of you just want to dance and be set free. You, got it, you can dance and see, be set free, you know. Yeah? Amen? L just let it out. Let it out. Let God just get all the praise and glory from you. Everything that has breath, we're going to praise Him. Amen. Well, are you happy? I see some smiley faces. That's good. And the ones who are not smiling, can you just pinch them a little bit? Tell them, you're in the right place today. You're in the right place. All right. Well, in the seat in back in front of you, there is a, a welcome home connection card. We want to make sure we connect with you. We pray with you. We want to make sure that we're here for you. If you can take the opportunity to fill this out, you'll get some instructions at the end of the service. Uh, you can start filling it out. Make sure you complete it. If there are any prayer requests, write it down. We will be praying for you and making sure that our faith is joining with yours. Uh, next week, we have uh, all those that are new to BCF Church within the last 12 months uh, and have not attended a newcomer's um, reception. We're going to have one next week. We want to welcome you to come. It's at 12.30. Make sure and come here. Let's get to meet you a little bit. Let's hear your heart, see what we can do to bless you as well. This time... Uh, We have family focus. Where's Kathleen? <laughs> I'm waiting for her. It's a good thing to wait for a lovely wife. It's worth it all for all those single men. 27 years and it seemed like I've met her yesterday. We're going to take you right into family focus this morning. And uh, our title this morning is Take the Road Less Traveled. And I, and I was thinking about last year when I was working, the kids are home from the summer my wife takes them all over the place trying to find things to do in the summer. And she took, them, she took me with them to this trail. And uh, it was a place where not much people were going. And, and uh, I started looking and we were kind of breaking grounds and, and exploring. And noticed that it's a place where another, not a lot of people go. And it was very exciting to discover a lot of new things in this place. Now, when I think about the uh, Take the Road Less Travel, I woke up thinking about this, and I started thinking about, you know, so many of us want to take the easy road. We want to take the road where everybody else is going. It seems a little bit easier, and we kind of do that with our family and our relationships is too. You know, um, I, f I believe that the road that, you, the road that less traveled is where our dreams are awakened. This is a place where not many people go, and we can expect our dreams to be awakened and, and to be uh, made known to others as well. The road less traveled is where our friendships are created. I mean, we can meet amazing people when we go places or, or see things or, that we've never seen before, people we've never met before. We can make amazing friendships. It's also a place where relationships are forged like none other, especially in the family. When you go and do things with your family and explore and experience things together, you create really strong relationships. It's also a place that restores hope and values when you go above and beyond for each other. You know, many times in today's society, we know the road that they travel is if things don't work out, we just give up. You know, we leave that partner, we leave our children. But when you take that road that is less travel and you fight for your family, you go as an adventure together, you know, that's where you're, you strengthen your relationships with your family and your friends and your, and your relationship with your husband as well. That was one thing Kathleen told me in our marriage, that she will fight for me when we were going through some challenging times in our early years. And that stuck with me throughout our ages. But we're going to leave three tips with you. One is align your morals and value with, uh, with that of God and not of the world. Because it's very easy to go with the world, but we need to focus on God. Number two, think of it as an adventure. It's always good to, to think of God's word and, and God's plan for our lives as an adventure. Because there are always new things to discover. And thirdly, create a road of success for your children to follow. And I think that's a very um, important entity that all of us need to follow. You know, one of the things what Kathleen says is about uh, we travel to make those dreams come true. One of our dreams is to have grandkids. And, and uh, the other day, Kristen and, and Jose came up and they brought this to my office and uh, told us we're going to be grandparents. So if you can congratulate them at the end of the service, that would be great. Let's put our hands together and welcome Pastor Randy and Pastor Joe. He looks old enough to be a grandfather, right? <laughs> I don't think there's a, a, an age category for that. 
since we're great grandparents. So well, so glad to welcome you today. You know, I, I just before we go any further, I just want to appreciate all that were here when Ted Shuttlesworth's meetings were on. Uh, all of our team on stage did a great job. Appreciate it, and everybody, everybody stepped up. All the ushers, everybody that helped out, children's area, and everything, just made it possible for for so many to receive from Jesus. And and uh, you've got connection cards there. Dr. Harrison mentioned it. Put it. Put a. Uh, a testimony, whatever God did, if God did something specific, mark it down so that we can have record of it. I want to welcome those uh, that are watching from far away as well. Already more than 35 people have joined us and some from uh, India and across Canada and even from Singapore. And so we want to pray uh, for, for friends around the world. In fact, I, I have friends right now that uh, are pastors in Singapore that... Uh, that have been convicted of doing some things that the government felt was wrong, and they're in prison right now. And so we believe that God will be with them there. Can you, can you just believe for that? Been praying for them strong, you know, and just feeling what their family and, and everybody else, church family, would, would feel. And so we want to worship God. You know, we're going to take a few minutes. We're going to receive offering in a little while, but, but we, we want to focus on Jesus. Let's stand together and... and just join your faith. I want to pray about a couple things before we, we sing again. Father, we come together Jesus. as your family together. Jesus. Not just in this room, but outside this room as well. You join so many of our hearts with people all around the world. Jesus. So we join our faith with Jesus. them for you to intervene Jesus. in their situations. Jesus. For you to manifest, demonstrate your life right where they are, whether they're in prison whether they're in times of persecution, whether they're making important decisions and, and just struggling through the, the regular routines of life. We pray, Lord, for you to intervene in their life. We pray for Pastor Steph and his family who lost their dad. We, we pray for, uh, for, uh, for Pastor Dwight that lost his mom last night. And we just pray for you to comfort those families, for others that have once in a hospital, we just pray for you to intervene in their situation even now. But Lord, you are above all of these things. You want us to look beyond the difficulties of life around us unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. So Lord, we want to take this time to worship and honor you. For you alone are worthy of our praises. Thank you, Father. Could we join our faith? Jesus. And just worship Jesus together. Worship your 
is failing, the end draws near, and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise on and day. Ten thousand years and then forever.
He said he'd inhabit our praises. So let's just continue. Lift your hands if you want in the air. Just continue to allow him to inhabit our praises. is here right now he knows exactly what you need he knows exactly what you are carrying right now and he wants you to know he has your back he is surrounding you by your spirit by his spirit he wants you to experience him you see there is power in worship as we worship him as we invite his presence to overwhelm us, then he comes and he breaks the power of the enemy over our lives. And those things that hold us back, those things that are fighting against God's will for your life, he is coming by his spirit and he is breaking them off. Oh, he la bashanda da da nianda, la bashanda da da nianda kusha. He has not forgotten you. He sees everything. 
concerning you. And today, he wants you to know that his love is surrounding you and his love is upholding you and that as you hang on to his presence breakthrough will come by his spirit He is taking you to new levels. Don't stay with the old, but walk in the path that is before you, and you will see the glory and presence of God. Many times you just think you're, you're just in the background, but God wants you to know you are a pillar in his house. You are a pillar of his presence. You are a pillar of his provision. You are a pillar of his healing power. And as you invite others, you will see it flow through you. Jesus, 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 Some of you that need healing still in your body, slip out of your seats, come down front. Our prayer teams will help you. Jesus. Don't hesitate. Jesus. You need healing in your body or your mind. Jesus. Step out of your seats and come Jesus. down. Don't Jesus. feel shy. The Jesus. Spirit of God is here to help you Jesus. today. Where the presence of Jesus. the Lord is, there is liberty, Jesus. freedom. If you need freedom in your life, just slip Jesus. out. Don't be shy. Jesus. We're not in a rush today. Jesus. We'll be all right. Jesus. Just receive. Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus. Jesus. Please sing. Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus. Let's just continue Jesus. to worship him. I believe your mind.
Sing it again now. Nothing is impossible. Nothing. Jesus is here. Nothing is impossible. You know, in the book of Romans, chapter 8, it says in verse 31, What then shall we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and for more it is also risen. Who is then ever at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, shall distress, Shall persecution, shall famine, shall nakedness or peril, or the sword, as it is written, for your sake are killed all day. We who are counted as sheep to the slaughter, yet in all these things, more. we are more We're than conquerors Amen. through him who loved us Hallelujah. and gave himself for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what comes your way. If God is for you, no one can be against you. If you love God with your whole heart, he is fighting on your behalf. And the enemy cannot have us hold over you. As you persist to love God, as you continue to walk in his path, we don't understand the circumstances of life. We don't always understand what comes our way. But we know that we know that we know that if we put our trust in God, He will see us through wherever we are, whatever we need, He will bring to us. So if you need a job, praise Him. Give him worship. Exalt his name. If you came forward and you need healing in your body, start praising the Lord. Start thanking him. He is your healer. I tell you, we serve an amazing God. Pastor Jason in the first service was telling Friday night the youth giving testimony of receiving healing during Pastor Ted's meetings. I tell you, God is an amazing God. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. He wants you to experience everything he has for you. He is so amazing and so wonderful. Don't you just love him today? Amen. Don't Amen. you just want to worship him and Amen. thank him for his goodness? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise, Praise God. Jesus. Please be seated. You know, we... we we Praise just want to give the Holy Spirit liberty. Is that true? Jesus. And freedom. 
And we also want to honor, honor him yes. as he leads us along as well. I want to give you opportunity to be able to honor God in a different way, a financial way today. You know, he's, he, he gives us responsibility. Is that true? Yes. God puts all things in our hands. And then he gives us encouragement on what to do. And then he watches to see what we do. <laughs> How do we actually follow out what he has given us to do? And one of those areas is in the area of giving, tithes and offerings. And so in the seat back in front of you, there's offering envelopes. If you'd pull one out, that, that would be great. You know, whoever has something that God has put in your hand, let's give a portion back to him. I, I just appreciate the way parents have taught children who become young people, teens and young adults, to honor God with their substance, whatever they get. If they get an allowance, they bring a portion of it. This is what God's people do. It's how we love him, how we express our love to him in very practical ways. Some people think it's all right just to sing, just to say, thanks, God, and walk away. But God says he wants to open the windows of heaven. He wants to bless us in so many areas. But our, the, the blessing that God gives is dependent on how we respond to him. You know, many people have not received God's salvation. Did you know that? And yet he said it's for everyone, everyone. All you have to do is receive it, and this is how you do it. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe that God has raised him from the dead, and you shall be saved. But many people choose and say, no, I'll just live right, and that'll be all right. That's all I have to do. But you see, God sets the criteria. We don't. And so the same thing in our area of giving. He gives us opportunity every time we come together, whether you're watching online for wherever you are, you're able to give there. On the website, there's a place where it says give. You can do that right here in this place. We have the offering envelopes. So we, we try to make it as easy as possible. If you make a check, just use BCF. You don't even have to spell it out. You can give with the text to give as, as I prefer to do on Sundays. We set up for online banking. We do that at other times. We have a debit machines at the end of the service. We're trying to make it so easy so that we can worship and honor God in all the things we do. Amen. And then last Sunday, uh, Easter Sunday, we received pledges uh, to, fit, to be able to take the next step to finish our, our uh, other part of the building where we put a second floor in for more rooms, a larger youth room and other rooms, offices and, and a foyer that's actually five times as big as the one now so that we can, we can serve not just ourselves, but we can serve the community much better. And many of you are so kind to fill out the pledges, but I think there may have been a few that, that just weren't able to be here last week. And so, ushers, do you have some of those pledge forms? If you want one, just raise your hand. Don't be shy. And uh, the ushers will just make sure you have one. You can fill it out and put it in the offering bucket. It's to give over and above regular giving from now until next Easter. Okay, And that's the 1st of April. Anyone need some? Okay, good. Some over the far side, Brother Jim, as well. So don't, don't be shy. We're here as a church family. That means that we don't take responsibility ourselves. We all take responsibility to advance God's work. And so I, I appreciate you, each one, so much. We love you. And we love what God is doing amongst us. Let me give you just a, a moment so that we can prepare. You lift your offering up to the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. We can give of what you've given us, and in return, we get resources. So, Father, today we bring a portion back to you. We honor you, Father, with everything you've given us so that your kingdom can continue to grow, so that your will can be done in our city, in our country, and throughout the world. So we give you honor and glory today with the gifts we give. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Ushers, would you please, sir? Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. Lord Jesus.
is finally here. Aren't you glad about that? Hey. And at springtime, it's a great time to clean things up. So ladies, I have a great opportunity for you. May 13th, we're going to have a, a time here from 1 to 3, special time, and we're calling it My Sister's Closet. And we're going to have a fashion show, and we're asking you to clean out your closet and bring some of those nice things you have hanging there that maybe have shrunk a little bit. Or maybe, you know, when I was young, my sister was bigger than me. And my nanny in England would send us dresses every Easter. And my mom would put my sister's dress in my closet when she got too big for it. And that dress would hang there. And it would hang there because I never did become the size of my sister. And so I never did wear her clothes. They were always the wrong shape for me. But those dresses hung there when someone else could have been wearing them. Now, maybe you have some things in your closet like that. So I'm asking you to bring them in because, you know, are we part of God's family? Yes. Are you glad to be part of God's family? So as part of God's family, we're sisters together. So I don't know about you, but if I need something, I go to my sister's house, and I borrow it. When my sister needs something, she comes to my house, and she borrows it. Do you do that? No? Are we the only family that does that? You know, my sister's a realtor. One time, she was staging someone's house. And I was at work, and I came home, and there were furniture missing from my house. And I thought, Where, where's this stuff gone? I called my sister, and she says, oh, I forgot to call you. I got so busy. But as I was doing things, I was short a few pieces to, ma to make the house look good, so I just borrowed some. <laughs> Once the house sells, you can have it back. <laughs> you know, the people moved. They were so excited about selling their house, they moved, and they moved with my stuff. <laughs> Don't get too attached to your stuff. I know, he wants me to get back to this. So Saturday, May 13th, mark it on your calendar, my sister's closet, fashion show, and clothing exchange, and we have guest speaker Tr Katrina McLeod from Rising Angels that will be with us right here in Brampton. So invite your friends to that, and, and also... Uh, Mother's Day, there's family photo. We're trying to make this so that you can bring your friends and family. But this weekend, we have our men's conference, Elevate Men's Conference. I want all the guys to, uh, to sign up today if you haven't already. We're going to be having, uh, we're going to be able to play with toys like this. Okay, let's see that. <laughs> I was going to wait till Pastor Reed gets up so we could see if we could circle around him while he's doing his end of service announcements. But lots of different activities coming up for that. You're doing well. Thank you. And so sign up for that, guys, please. Uh, we are the host church. There's other churches involved as well. So we don't want to miss out. We want to be able to do our very best. And so I'm, I'm looking for about 100 of you to sign up today. All right? So you can hurry. We'll get it. Can you drive it out of there? Okay, let's see. Here we go. And who's that Raptures guy? Yes, we have Pastor Francis Armstrong, who you'll who will really be, he's a great speaker, wonderful man of God. And the Raptors, voice of the Raptors is uh, Herbie Kuhn, and he's going to be here as well. So if you ever go to a Raptors game, his voice is the one you hear. Strong believer in Jesus. All right, let's get to the Word of God. Galatians is where we want to start. We'll be in the second chapter today, but let me give you some background. I believe, you know, for the last number of months, I've really felt something strong in my life, and I've tried to make adjustments personally to, to move along and cooperate with God. And, and that's a realization that's, that it's easy for us to get a little bit um, uh, comfortable in our faith with Jesus Christ. And now we should have comfort in our faith, but sometimes we just get a little bit lazy and we, we, we get, uh, well, it's like, uh, it's like an old married couple. They're not as passionate as when they first met one another. Okay, where's my old married couple? <laughs> 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 uh, 
where it, it, the relationships change over time. Is that true? When you're first together, I won't pick on any young couples, although I, have, I see a new baby down there in the middle. Praise the Lord. But there's a passion that God wants restored in us. He doesn't want us to just get lazy in our faith. Come on a Sunday and worship him for a little while. Maybe spend an hour and a half, two hours together with God. And then the rest of the week, just get busy with life and go on and even forget to open our Bible, forget to talk to God. But he wants us to be passionate about him. He wants us to, to love him with all of our heart all of the time. Is that true? That's what he desires, and that's what we do, don't we? And we love him with all of our heart, but sometimes other things get in the way. Other things tend to distract us. And, and so how do you know if, if that's your situation? Well, you become critical of others. You become, uh, maybe this really isn't areas. You start to look at, at what's happening in other people's lives and compare yourself instead of just focusing in on what God has said. You set aside the Bible, and, and from one Sunday to the next, you pick it up, dust it off each Sunday, bring it to church with you, and then put it back on the shelf. And, and sometimes you listen to something, but you're really not committed the way you first were. I believe there's a first love God wants to get us back to. I believe he wants to challenge us with that. So over these next couple of weeks, I want to challenge you as I challenge myself with that. In fact, I want to be like David was. Even though he started off as a young boy, he was a songwriter, a worshiper, even when he looked after sheep. When he became a king, he didn't stop that. He still honored God, still worshiped God with all of his heart. In fact, let me read a couple of verses. In Psalm 41, verse 1 and 2, it says, As the deer pants for the waters, so my soul longs after you, O Lord. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When, when shall I come and appear before God? His desire was to pursue after God, not to wait for God to come, but to pursue after God. That's what he's looking for, young lives. Some of us older ones, that's what he's looking for. And then he, he said this really challenged me. Delight yourself also in the Lord. When you delight in something, you're excited about it. You tell everybody about it. You, you want to share what you're delighted in. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him and he'll bring it to pass. So he's looking for us to be like that, I believe. And then when I went to the New Testament, I, I looked at a man that uh, was passionate for, for Jesus, but he didn't start out that way. He started out religious, where he, he went to synagogue all the time, where he studied in the Bible school of his day, where, where he started to try to persecute those who thought differently than him. That's not God's will. We're not here to persecute others. We're here to help others find the living God. Is that true? doesn't matter whether they're of another religion or, or just... Uh, believers uh, that believe in the Bible but don't believe in Jesus, we still love them and still encourage them. But Paul, Saul, who became Paul, had a life-changing experience when he encountered Jesus. I should say, when Jesus encountered him. Jesus interrupted his life. So then, let, let me tell you what I feel God is doing. God is giving us an opportunity to come into his presence and honor him and worship him. He's giving us that opportunity on Sundays when we come together. He's giving us opportunities throughout the week. He's inviting us so that we can receive all that he has, so that we can experience his presence. I, I feel that if we don't take that opportunity, he's going to confront us in a strong way. Mm -hmm. And so invitation is much better than confrontation. So let's respond to his invitation so that we can cooperate with him. Galatians chapter 2. Verse 20. Many of you are familiar with this scripture. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus loved us enough that he died a brutal death for you and I. He died that death because sin separated us from God. Yes. It doesn't matter how young you are or how old you are. As we start to walk in life, have you ever noticed with little children, it doesn't take them very long to learn to say no. 
Sin creeps in very fast. And if we're not careful, we can become comfortable and used to it. But that is the reason Jesus died, because that sin will separate us from his love. And he wants us to come to him. Many times, we just want to live for ourselves. That's the spirit that's in the world today. What's in it for me? What do I get out of this? But you see, the church isn't a social club. Right. It's not a community center. It's a place where we come to learn and grow in God, to worship the living God, and have fellowship with like believers, and bring others so they can enter into it with us. Yes. Yeah. It's not just what's in it for me. Mm. I deserve the punishment of sin. But because God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son to pay the price for that sin that I couldn't pay. You see, only Jesus qualified to take our sins away. He legally took that place on my behalf and your behalf. And spiritually, he bridged the gap so you and I could be empowered to live our life for him. I tell you, that's enough to get some passion moving inside of us because Jesus did it for me. Tell your neighbor, Jesus did it for me. He made you a new creature in him. The old is past. The new has come. And he wants us to walk in that freedom and understand that he loves to let his light flow through you and I. That he didn't go to the cross so we could celebrate Easter. He didn't go to the cross so you could come when you have a problem. He went to the cross so you could walk in freedom and liberty yes. every day of your life. Yes. Amen. 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 So, so it's, it's personal as well, isn't it? It's something where Jesus changes our desire. What Jill said just touched me a little bit when she talked about that little child that learned to say no. How many found that out as parents? Well, think, of it, think of it then as a believer. When you first receive Jesus, everything is, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I'll do whatever you want. But do believers learn to say no to God? I want to do what I want. I believe that they do. We do sometimes. And I believe God wants to turn us around from that and call it sin instead of just calling it, I want my way. And so God wants to help us personally to live in a way that always pleases him. And then he empowers us. Let me read that verse again. Galatians chapter 2. I have been crucified with Christ. Have you? Yes. I have been. Past tense. Crucified with Christ. Let that sink in. Has your sin gone on the cross with him? Absolutely. Absolutely. Has your life been surrendered like he surrendered his? To, to the will of the Father, for the benefit of others, not just for the benefit of yourself, but we lay down our life for him. Paul said, I die daily. What does that mean? It means you say no to what your flesh wants to do daily because it's not what God wants you to do. And so it's part of being crucified with Christ, but it doesn't stop there. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. See, Jesus wants to live his life through you. He wants to empower you so that it's not just your willpower that tries to do what is right. You're empowered by the living God on the inside of you, and he's there helping you all the time. And then what do, how do we live? How do we live? The life we now live in the flesh, we live, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Friends, you are empowered to live by faith. Now, faith is something that you don't always see. Is that true? 
What does Hebrews chapter 11, 1 says? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So it's what you want. You're looking at what you desire. You're looking at what God wants for you. <clears throat> but it's not complete yet. But you still keep moving towards it. You still keep believing. It's a substance. It's something you can, that's tangible that you can sink your, your hands, your teeth into. And we can believe God even when it's not finished yet. We still have faith. And when our faith starts to waver, we live by his faith because nothing is impossible with God and all things are, po are possible for those who believe. That means when you believe, that means you have faith. Yes, we know that what God has said, I know whom I have believed. I am persuaded that he is able to keep that what I'm committed unto him until that day. We understand that God has begun a good work in us and he shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. He's already at work in us. Hallelujah. He's already at work in you. But now he's looking. Will our faith keep focused in the right direction? Will we continue to live for God by faith? Now he's given us the Holy Spirit. Is that true? The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Was that impossible? Yes. With God, it wasn't. With the Holy Spirit, it was not impossible to raise him from the dead. With man, it's not possible. But with God, all things are possible. That same spirit lives inside of you so he can make you alive unto God. He can make your body alive unto healing and health and strength. He can make your finances, your situations alive unto the provision of God. He's here, but he's looking for our faith, my friends. He empowers us to live by faith. Now, how does your faith grow? My faith grows as I stay in constant communion with God, as I get to know him better and better each day, as I walk along with him so I know his will in each situation. As I look into the word of God, faith starts to rise that I see, yes, he's the same yesterday, today, and therefore he will be the same tomorrow also. And I, I don't waver in my faith. I trust that what God has said, he shall do. Amen? Amen? And then I rehearse that. I, I build that up inside myself. I talk to God. I encourage myself in the Lord. I speak the word of God on the inside of me, even when what my eyes say is different than what my heart is believing for. And God empowers us to do that. Christ in us empowers us to do it and to touch others with it. And have faith for others. Not so that I get more notches in my Bible belt. But it's all because of motivation. And his love for you and I should be our motivation. Because he loved us so much. His love is so great. His love will carry us to wherever we need to go. To whatever we need to do. You are loved. Regardless of where you are, regardless of what you've done, you are loved. That is amazing in itself. Because the world says, if you don't do this and you don't do that, we won't like you. But God says, I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. I love you. And I will receive you. I tell, that is an amazing thought to me. That God loves me. And he loved me so much that Jesus gave his life for me, regardless of anything I do. Knowing that I may make a mistake, he still loves me. That is so amazing to me. You know, we used to sing an old song, Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Okay, some of you know it. <laughs> Singing wasn't my greatest. You know... I made a record. I have two records at home that I am on. I know it's hard to believe. Do you know what I found out this week? I found out that at the Courier studio outside of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where I made those records with my youth choir, that Brother Ted was hired by them 
and he put the risers up where our choir stood to make the record. He remembered working that day. I tell you, it's amazing. It is amazing. That's really nothing to do with the message. It's just Amen. amazing. <laughs> but God wants us to respond to that love. He wants us to be living in that place where we receive that love. And you see, as we come together and we worship him, you can't help but feel his love. That's why we need to worship him. That's why we need to inhabit our praises to his presence. Because it's in that place that we experience that love. That's why we need to read what his word says. As we read the verses and, and they sink into our hearts, just like David did. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. Father, I delight in you. I don't understand what's happening right now, but I choose to delight in you because you love me. And for no other reason than he loves me. You know, there's so many people in the world right now that don't even know what real love is. But if the people of God would demonstrate what the true love of God is. Think how people would be touched. There's so many hurting people just waiting to feel loved and accepted. But it's that love that has to motivate us because without it, our passion will not be real. You see, we can put it on. We can say the right things. We can even do the right thing. But if our heart is not touched by the love of God, it will not be communicated to others, and others will not feel it. We'll be like a robot, doing and saying, doing and saying, press the button. But when the love of God is there, you. you may not always do the right thing. You may not always say the right thing, but his love will be there to break through all that and accomplish what needs to be accomplished. You. you know, God is so amazing. I could tell you so many stories of so many times in just practical things where God's love just came and touched us, where God's love moved in and changed things that we couldn't change. Because how many have found out there's a lot of stuff in life that's impossible for you to do anything about? And you find yourself there, but you can't do anything about it because it's impossible. But when you move into God's presence, with God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. Impossible for me, but possible for him. Yes. I don't know how to get to the end of the month. But possible for him, his love will lift me. His love will carry me. And before I know it, I'm there because of his love. Things that I can't change. He comes and he puts a love and a peace in my heart that I can continue to walk, that I can continue to honor him. And even though the circumstances around may be blowing, I can worship him, and his presence envelops me. His presence lifts me up. You know, yesterday, I wasn't sleeping very good, and I picked up my iPad. I know, don't put your iPad on at night. And I streamed the service in India. And at first, this man was speaking, and I thought, oh, they've got a guest. He sounds, he could speak English. And it sounded like maybe he was from Asia, but I don't know. And then all of a sudden it switched. And the man speaking in Tamil. Now, how many know I do not understand Tamil? I have enough trouble with English. It took me eight years to get Ola down in Spanish, coffee con leche. So I'm, I'm not too much into languages. But as I was lying there watching the service, and the man was preaching in Tamil. The Spirit of God was reaching out to my heart. I want to tell you, the love of God can touch you 
even when you don't understand what's going on around you. His love can break through whatever Amen. it is. Amen. But it, you determine how much you will allow. You determine what you'll let. Yeah. You make the decision how much of God you want. I think we are in a place today where his people want his presence. Yes, amen. I think we're in a place today where people don't want to stay in the impossible, but they want to move to the possible with God. Impossible for me, but I'm going to walk with amen. the possible for God, amen. and I am going to see God move in my life, in my family, in my workplace. Because all things are possible with him. Thank you, Jesus. And because of his love, he motivates me into those things. And the passion for him grows in my heart. Thank you, Jesus. See, see his, his motivation was love for us. But because he's in us, our motivation for others must be caring and loving them as well. Do you love God enough to care Jesus. for others? Do you love him enough Jesus. to care for those that maybe not... Are, all, are not always nice around us. In your workplace, you get so busy with Jesus. work that you forget about people Jesus. around you. Let's, let's determine to honor God in our workplace, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, and to worship him and to draw near to Jesus and watch him let his love pour out through our lives into those around us. Do you have faith for that? I have faith for it for you as well as for me. I believe God wants to help us. The series is about Jesus in your life. He is in your life. Many people don't know him. But what is he doing? He's on the outside encouraging them to come into relationship with him. He's sending the Holy Spirit to knock on people's hearts, to get into their minds, to be able to encourage them that God has a good plan. He's sending others like us around. See, Jesus is already in our life. Even before you knew him, he knew you. Still does. So let's lift our hands and just worship him for a moment. Let's ask him. Why don't you just ask him? Say, Lord, I Jesus. give you permission. Jesus. I ask you into my life. Jesus, Jesus, I ask you into every Jesus. area of my life. Go ahead, talk to him now. Jesus, Just talk out loud. No, the people Jesus. around you aren't listening to you. Just say, Lord, I invite you into every area of my life. Jesus. I invite you into my relationships. Lord, as I develop them, you be with me. Help me. Jesus. I invite you into my finances. I invite you into... The health area of my life. I invite you into my mind, Jesus. Fill my mind with your thoughts. Let me think the way that you think, Jesus. Jesus. I invite you fully into my life. I hold nothing back. Did you, did you, are you praying Jesus. that? Lord, we hold nothing back from you. But we want to honor you and worship you. Jesus. And know that you're always you. there. You never leave us nor you. forsake us. You're always there with us. To help us live in a way that pleases our Father. Yes. And impacts positively the lives Jesus. of those around us. So Father, we pray you'd help Jesus. us. Help us this week to draw near to God. And know that you will draw near to us. Jesus. As we draw near to you, you're already drawing near to us. Lord, the closer we draw to you, the closer you draw to yes, us. Father. You are here to help us. So that we can experience your presence every single day, every moment of every day. Jesus. So Lord, we just lift our hands to worship you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love for us. We ask you, Lord, to continue to change us. Don't give up on us. Continue to change us so that we're more like Jesus every single day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Pastor Reed, would you come? I look forward to seeing all the men Friday night. I know our young men are going to be here as well. It's going to be a great time. Thanks, Pastor Reed. Just want to remind you of a few things. You know, while Pastor Randy was praying, and we were all praying together, maybe you prayed that prayer for the first time. 
accepting Jesus or asking Jesus to come into your life for the first time? Would you indicate that on the connection card? Or maybe you accepted Jesus Christ some time ago, but you walked away through the struggles of life and you decided to rededicate your life to Jesus. Please indicate that on the connection card as well. Maybe you're also interested in being water baptized since you believe. Please indicate that. And if you, and if you need a home visit, please place that on the connection card as well. And for the, men, for the men's Elevate conference that's starting on Friday, if you're planning to attend, would you indicate that as well? And if you have a prayer request, please put that on the connection card. We want to stay in contact with you over the week. And if you're watching via the internet, please communicate with us via the chat box on the side there. Do you love the Lord with all your heart? Did you receive from God today? Would you stand with me as I close in prayer? And for the strong men that are here, we'll only be stacking the chairs to the extreme right, take them back into the room. We want to leave this area clear for the activities during the week. So we're not taking this row or this row down, just the row to my right. If you're here for the first time and you have your connection card, would you take it to the BCF Cafe just in the lobby area? Some of our leaders will be there to spend some time with you. We have a gift for you. And for the rest of us, we leave our connection card as we exit. Lift your hands with me, please, as we close in prayer. Our Father, we thank you for what we have received from you today. We thank you that you are the God who loves us first. And we thank you, Lord, that we can demonstrate your love in us and through us, in our family, in our place of work, in our community, wherever we are. We carry the aroma of Christ with us. So, Father, I thank you for your blessings that goes with us as we leave this place. I thank you, Lord, that you will empower us to do your will this week. So, Father, we bless your name, we praise you, and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. God bless you.